So I built this modern wall-mounted wardrobe that's strong enough to sit on and even jump on. Besides that, it features shoe storage, a big drawer, a rail with hooks and a top shelf. I will also show you my first attempt at welding, which should give you a good laugh. And you will find out why I spent over a month building these edge clamps. The whole point of this build was to save money. Well, tell me later if that worked. But I needed a better wardrobe for my apartment that fits this cabinet I bought. It was quite expensive, but excellent quality. However, the matching wardrobe to this, I thought I could do better with more features for less money. So first, I spent some money on the backboard and the drawer front. Everything cut to dimension and with edging on the front for about 85 bucks, pretty good deal. I lay it flat on the bottom to lay out all the hole locations. Since I designed the whole thing as a 3D model, I could print out a drawing and make this super easy. So there's a hole, there's a hole, also here and there and one up there. To drill everything straight, I made a simple guide for the drill bit and a backboard will prevent chip out. Fantastic little jig and the whole size is a loose fit for an M8 bolt. They will now fit the shoe rack, the drawer with the top to sit on and the top shelf with the stainless steel clothes rail. The wood I use is solid oak and I designed everything to be 25 millimeters thick, so I only have one milling setup and save time. One piece however was extremely bent, which fortunately doesn't matter here since I mostly need shorter parts. But then the procedure as usual. Cut off the bark, joint the pieces straight, cut them to width and plane to thickness, which is infinitely quicker with a helping hand. So this will be the shoe rack, these are the sides of the drawer cabinet, this gets glued together for the board to sit on and this gets glued together for the top shelf. So glue, clamps and repeat. While that's drying I can work on the shoe rack parts. I draw the whole layout onto the wood as well as the rough shape and head to the drill press. The 15mm holes are 20mm deep and the 12mm holes are 22mm deep. And while it was set up I drilled the drawer side parts as well. There's also a hole in the edge for which I made another drilling jig that I could just line up with the layout marks. And without a jig to final depth. Turned out very precise. And this hole fits a barrel nut and here the M8 bolt. And this is the type of connection that can easily support shoes or in this case someone sitting. Except that this will never work with the screw head just resting on the particle board, so there will be a big ass steel plate cut from big ass flat stock. Cut to length, I squared up the ends and marked the whole layout on the pieces like before. I center drilled everything and then got close to the shield. The diameter has no depth indication, so it's a through hole. And the rest is a shortcut for the chamfer. It means using a 90 degree chamfer tool and go as deep until the upper diameter is reached. There are other methods, but that's what Fusion 360 generates automatically and in this case it's also the limit of the tool. The other holes are the same except smaller diameter and smaller chamfer. Then deburring the other side, rounding the corners and clean everything before the installation. I clamped them at a precise location, marked and drilled the holes and screwed them down. Wow, I didn't expect that. Look at how much off some of the holes in the particle board are compared to the ones in the steel. Even though I used a brad point drill bit with the guide, it seemed to wander a bit on this hard surface. So now I am re-drilling everything with the steel as a guide. I should have done it like that from the beginning, but now I know. So time to test the mounts. Well, that looks promising because right now these two pieces support the whole back plate and next now are the stainless steel tubes. There are many different ways to get them to equal length and I had an idea for the lathe. I marked and turned the first tube to length and zeroed the dial at that position. Then I clamped a story stick together of the tube's stick out and used that on the next tube to get the same stick out. When I then turned down the end to the same dial position as before, I should get the exact same length, which seemed to work great and I can put the shoe rack together. Wow, this is really hard to put together. The second side is just barely on, so I'll wait till the final assembly and now finish off the sides. For the shape, I made a template from MDF and double-sided taped that to the pieces, which I roughly cut to shape as well. 
I used a flush trim bit with a top and bottom bearing, which allows me to always cut with the grain and achieve the best surface. Lastly a round over and these parts are done for now. So on to the drawer parts. I've already got the sides, the top is still in the clamps, but it should be dry by now. That looks good and I left it a bit thicker to cut it to final thickness after the glue up. It obviously doesn't fit through my planer and there are many other ways to get it flattened to thickness. I could set up the automatic flattening jig I recently built, but I go the easy route and use the CNC router. This is the max length this machine can do. Actually, it's too long. It only works because the flattening bit is big enough to slightly overlap the machining area and yet still I got these little bits left over. But one manual pass takes care of that. And on the first pass I had it shimmed into corners to take out some twisted head. The second side then without shims, but that's boring so let's skip right to the top shelf which actually was too long. But that gets removed when cutting to final length, which I also did with the sitting board. Part of the design is to make this stronger than it looks like. So from the outside the sides appear nice and thin, but they're actually pretty thick and strong. To make that happen I need to cut some big rabbits into the edges, which requires multiple passes up to the final depth. The same for the board, except here it's on three sides and slightly different dimensions. The jig I use is a router screwed to a big base plate with slots and a fence. It can do a lot of things and I have a separate video if you want to know more. By design these surfaces are flush and here is a slight overhang. And with the drawer front in place that thin wall look works. So let's make the drawer next. When I built the drawers for my bed I was criticized a lot for using plywood. Okay, so this time I used solid oak book matched with dovetail joints. I hope that is fancy enough. Getting the book match look is straightforward. Cut a thicker board in half, glue it back together and mill to dimensions. There are many ways for the dovetails, but I'm using the simplest for me, the panto router. And let's make variable space dovetails. Why not? So here's the workflow with the dovetail bit. I set the overhang, then the depth of cut, plunge forward and lock it there. Then I cut straight down through the template center creating the tails. The tape prevents chip out. Then switching to a straight bit and a taper template section to cut the pins. Their size is adjustable and at first I wanted them a bit too big to sneak up on the fit. By sliding the template frame down it'll cut a little more material away until it's a good fit. From there it goes quick and there's my box. The bottom panel is an old piece of plywood that I sanded nice again, cut to size and cut grooves in the sides for it to fit in. The joinery fits a little too loose so there's a bit of movement and that makes it hard to square it up. But I know the bottom panel is square and cut to perfect size so I can use that to make the rest square as well. Now it's ready for the glue. I spread a good amount on all joints to fill in the tiny gaps, remove the little squeeze out at the bottom and clamped it. One band clamp and some normal ones. Checking squareness from corner to corner seems to be spot on, nice. Then I could pop out the bottom, remove the inner tape with the glue squeeze out and glue the bottom in for good. Clamps all around with some pieces to spread the pressure and while that's drying I can mount the slides. Instead of transferring the whole positions with a drill bit or something, I use the dimensions that come with the slide. Much simpler and more accurate. If you wonder about the outside tape, that was to add some thickness so the corner piece of the band clamp applies pressure here and not directly on the dovetail where it has no effect. After some cleanup work I can mount the other slide. I shim up the box with some washers, slide the assembled slide against the front and reveal the first two holes to mark them. Then holes and screws and disengage the slide for the third hole. Oh yeah, that looks promising. Nice. The front could be mounted now, centered. So I made sure the side overlap is equal and screwed it on. All right, the front is flush. The gaps are nice and even on both sides. 
And of course, it still works. Unfortunately though, it can be a bit loud, especially when you slam it shut, which will happen. So I think I'll recut this groove a little deeper and add some self-adhesive felt pads to dampen that. That's much nicer. And now the top on top. Now I cannot glue these because here I have grain running this way and here this way. And this will expand and contract with the seasons. If I glue that, it could bend or the glue could fail. Instead, I made some strips with slots for screws that allow the top to move. I glued them with a slight gap so the screws can pull the top down. Then I transferred the slot positions and put everything together. Ah, that looks really good so far. Unfortunately, I can't test sitting on it right now without it being screwed to the wall. So let's continue with the top shelf and my first ever welding job. It should be rather simple. One long square tube as the rail with end caps, two short sections to hang it from, and two tubes as supports, all stainless steel. So I got all the material, visited a friend with a TIG welder, and cut all the parts to length. First job was welding end caps to the round support tubes and the short ones to later cut threads into. The one for the short piece is a bit thicker for more threads. And here's the ugly result. Let's clean that up. The round tube we could clean up at the lathe and also cut threads at the same time. I then positioned, clamped and tacked it in place, checked again for square and tacked the other sides. Then welding solid. It was also my first time filming welding, so sorry that you can't see all that much. Oh yeah, this also happened. More than once. Next, I centered the round tube with some drill bits, tacked it and welded solid. And I'm quite pleased with this result. Then I cut the parts for the two extra hooks, clamped them down and went to town. Well, it's far from perfect, but I'm getting better. Lastly, the end caps that make the hooks. So this is what I brought home. The main rail, two more hooks and this glorious ugly test piece. Feel free to observe it from all angles and please tell me my mistakes. I'll soon have the chance to practice more. But for now, I grinded all the welds flush, did some shaping on the hooks and ground the top faces flush to cut the M8 threads into. So far so good, but before I start to finish them up, I want to mount them and see if anything needs changes. So similar to before, I made steel plates for the bolts on the back and mounted them accordingly. The top shelf gets the same holes drilled for the barrel nuts and then I can mount it. This mounts underneath the shelf with bolts through the shelf and through the back plate into the rods. But instead of the end just resting against the back plate, I wanted them to sink into the back plate. So there need to be holes in line with the mounting hole and to ensure that nothing moves this time, I clamped a guide in place. The weld had to be pretty accurate for both rods to fit. Let's see. Ah, almost, but I can just Bend that in and then it fits. Wow, what a great fit. Here it's touching the shelf. Here there's a tiny gap which I can press together, that won't matter. And the shelf is square. I would have never expected my first weld being this accurate, but I'll take it. And there I could transfer its position, mark the hole locations and drill them with a big chamfer. Now that little twist was bugging me, so I tried bending it back. Much better. Then I went on to finish the steel. First with a sanding disc to remove all the stains and grinding marks. And then I switched to a flap sander to smooth out the rest and give it a brushed look. Where the grinding directions meet, I covered up one side and got a sharp transition. The smaller pieces I could do stationary and here the grinding marks meet at a 45 degree angle. Quite a change. Some spots I had to do manually as well as the round parts. What? I'm quite pleased with the result but still far from good. If you have any tips on improving my welds, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn.
everything that mounts to the backplate is now complete. Time to finish up the backplate itself with the frame. Together with the other wooden pieces, I also prepared this long one for the frame that I now need to mill flat and cut into strips. The frame gets a relatively simple profile, all cut on a router table. So I have a 20mm bit sticking out 4mm, the 8mm fence distance I can set up with a drill bit and then go. Two feather boards make this operation nice and consistent. And then the same with a roundover. So far so good. Now the challenge will be to miter the corners and get them lined up. From the drawing I know the dimensions, but it's unlikely that I can hit them exactly. So I have a different method. I first cut the strips to rough length, keep the offcuts and align and clamp them to a perfect corner on the back plate. Having this clamped on both corners now gives me a physical representation of how long the actual piece needs to be and I can sneak up on the fit. And after a few cuts the alignment is just perfect. For gluing and clamping this I thought I'd build some edge clamps as a quick side project. Well, that escalated a little bit, turned into a huge project with two collaborations. There's the video about that. And on top of clamping to the edge, I also need to clamp down. That's quite simple with some tiny wedges. So then I proceeded with the glue. Once the first side was clamped, I could move the offcuts to the other side and glue on that frame part. While both sides are drying, they also already make up the guides for the long pieces and I can cut them to fit the same way. If you wonder about the jig I used for the miters, I've got a video about that as well. When clamping, I'd always squeeze a wedge in first and then an edge clamp. And that's why I built all these clamps. At this length, you just need to spread the clamping pressure. Of course, there are other ways, like with a bar clamp and a wedge, but with this edge overlapping top and bottom, these were just so convenient. And that's the frame done. Looks much better already. Now it occurred to me that this whole thing is gonna be quite heavy, about 50 kilos combined. And I'll hang this to the wall, so that needs to be done properly as well. Four of these 8mm bolts with a thick washer should do the trick. And I'll put two of them over the top shelf where it's too high to see them. And two underneath the drawer where you also can't see them. And on the back side needs to be a spacer, the thickness of the frame overlap, so the back plate doesn't get crushed when I bolt it to the wall. And with that, it's all ready for the final touches. Which is rounding over corners, sanding, and finishing with an hard wax oil. The frame I finished sanded before gluing cause sanding now would be a nightmare. Now assembly time. The shoe rack needs a lot of force and I pushed it up to the right distance front and back, put in the nuts and screwed it on. Yeah, should be strong enough for shoes or a tank. The drawer sides now get a bigger piece of felt and with the roundover now, the overlap design looks quite good. Lastly, the top shelf with the clothes rail and the hooks. With these barrel nuts, the whole assembly was super simple and everything is now rigid. I like that. I liked it so much that I had to build something else with it. This beverage crate rack for my friend as a thanks for the welding. Let me show you. I milled some more leftover oak into square pieces and went to the panther router for the joinery. A good opportunity to try out these new pneumatic clamps. After aligning the piece for the mortises, I just flick a switch and it's secure. That's so useful. And the second setup for the tenons is just as fast. Then with a custom template I made square holes with a through hole for the steel tubes to fit in. Speaking of which, I chopped them to length and drilled holes in the ends for the barrel nuts. Then I glued the frames together, gave it a chamfer and the same hard wax oil finish. The assembly then is straightforward. Well, it works, but unfortunately I only have two crates to show it. But my friend had some more and he really likes it. Now back to the project. In my apartment I installed the drawer sides and used them to lift the back plate up. Once positioned I could use the back plate itself as a template for the hole locations, which I then drilled for some suited wall anchors. Fully assembled we lifted it back up 
and screwed it to the wall. Okay, it's all mounted and the question is, can I sit on it? I can, oh yeah. Why so careful? It's strong enough to jump on. Medium tall shoes fit on the shelf, smaller ones beneath and tall ones in front. By the way, these are not mine. The drawer houses caps, gloves and similar. And on top is a good space for helmets. Some of the hooks are a bit useless now, but this wardrobe might be mounted elsewhere someday and symmetry just looks better. The rail spacing is designed so the hangers can never reach and damage the back panel. And there it's done. But did I save money? Well, just materials, yes. Considering the work, no. But then I also got this video. Let me know what you think, even if you don't like the design. It's definitely an upgrade, but let's make it realistic. You all know, that's how it is.